Hey everybody, uh, so this is going to be step two in my frame build uh, process here and typically what I like to do is just make a life size uh, mock-up drawing basically of the bike itself there before I start cutting and welding and things like that. Um, you know, there's plenty, of, you know, I could sort of on my other frame build that I did, there's plenty of really great software that you can use um, for designing frames and things like that. Um, but, you know, honestly, if you're going to build a frame, it's really a good idea to have a life-size drawing. So I just basically knew pretty close to what I wanted. And, you know, a lot of things you can actually lay it up on a piece of paper and find out if things are going to clear and things like that. So that's essentially what I did. Um, I wanted to do the the actual rear end first so I could get a, a definitive length as far as that's going to be my bottom bracket shell and then my center line of the rear axle there. So um, the overall uh, uh, diameter of my um, rear wheel there, I've determined it's about a, a right at about a 700 slightly over um, millimeter diameter so got slightly over 350 millimeters here from center of the axle line to the basically the top of the tire and this is essentially would be about the biggest tire that I would I would be using so you know you know my bottom bracket shell and then the you know center lines both ways there and then I basically just did a straight line you know up and then you know from there with the circle of the uh, the tire I could just position my actual tubes right on the piece of paper and you know essentially I've you know got my chain stay lines drawn out there and basically uh, you know did this to the shortest point I could get it in actually I started out with the, the axle and then just kind of positioned everything up to a point you know it's going to be sitting about something just like this and you know that was about you know with having a little bit of room you know on the edges here so I could you know I don't want the tubes right up on the edge of the bottom bracket shell I want them in just a little so that you know I don't want the weld to melt off the corner of the the, the uh, bottom bracket shell though but anyway come up uh, came up with about a 422 millimeter you know center to center rear end length there so um you know once i got that established i can just transfer that over to the full sized uh drawing there so that's essentially what i did and one one other thing that i did um that i kind of neglected to do on the last one was i needed to get a definitive width you know so in addition to working with you know clearance there i needed some clearance here on the cranks so here on on paper let's look it's about 128 my cranks are actually you know end to end if i measure that um they're about 135 so uh should give me nice you know plenty of room there to to get that spaced out so shouldn't be the issue that i had on my last uh, frame build so on my fork i did a similar concept with the uh you know axle line here and then the top of the tire so same dimensions um, but you know I kind of using the supplied fork legs there pretty pretty well came to find out that it's not you know I wanted this leg to protrude you know at least an inch and a half longer you know to work with the, the way I wanted to do the dropouts and obviously obviously these are not gonna work um, so I uh, ordered a couple basically sticks of three foot long uh, chromoly tubing, uh, inch and a quarter diameter, and then these are uh, the wall thickness is 065. So uh, that should definitely be strong enough. And um, I'm going to go hopefully tomorrow go see a buddy of mine, and we're going to, you know, put this. Put the bend there he's got a two bender and everything so hopefully i can get that accomplished tomorrow or here at some point soon but uh anyway yeah everything else will be essentially the same but um you know basically 
to go through to the frame I needed to determine how tall of a fork I needed so you know basically my clearance there and then I'm going to need, you know, initially I figured about 40 millimeters, which I had another fork that was similar in design that I, I kind of modeled this off of. But uh, being that these are inch and a quarter and the, the, um, uh, the, the uh, center radius line that I'm going to be using, I think it's, we're going to do a four and a half inch um, radius there. So it's probably good. The fork's probably going to not be quite a straight 90 you know lead in there so I'm probably gonna need I don't know I'm kind of guessing an inch and a half of actual weld height area there so um, basically I just you know mocked up and then here's a side view you know and this was first time I've ever really d tried to design a fork so after a few calculations and things I basically came came up with uh, you know from the center you know this would be kind of I guess simulate the uh, that will be the correct angle um, You know I'm gonna need about 395 millimeters from you know basically the center line even though that you, know, you got to keep in mind for the fork right there to the bottom of the steer tube so um, You know just going with the headset stack, you know the lock ring, you know where it's gonna be welded on and then you know that's going to be a, essentially the top of my um where my head tube is going to start so that gave me a good idea you know just from you know axle line to the top there i can just transfer that over to my full size drawing and then you know from there it's going to make it a lot easier to basically mock everything up so it's kind of the back half of the drawing i can't get it all in one screenshot but you know, essentially with the uh, with the other one, you know, if a guy wanted to just do one of these and had a pretty good idea of the dimensions and stuff they wanted to use, you know, basically just started with the infinite line across, which is my axle line here. And, you know, it's pretty simple knowing that, you know, 422 as far as my rear end length, you know, it's, you can just go, you know, 422 and then, you know, depending on how much drop you want, just pivot it down there. So um, I went with six centimeters of drop on this particular bike. So, you know, that's gonna be, that establishes the center of my bottom bracket. And then, um, you know, from there, I'm, I'm totally doing this off of a stack and reach thing. So came up with 57 centimeters of stack. And, you know, that was based off of basically the the height of my fork so uh, you know, that's my 57 there you know straight straight vertical and then straight horizontal 90 off of this I went with a 40 centimeter reach which is gonna line me up there with the center of my head tube uh, it's a little difficult to see the full you know, it's going to extend off, but the fork's going to basically look like an old red line or kind of a Botima-ish style fork. And, you know, I had to kind of <clears throat> experiment with it a couple times. You can see there was, you know, there was multiple stacks that I tried and, you know, just, you know, that's uh, after I measured up the fork, that's when I determined that that's, you know, where that needed to be. I could definitely tweak that head tube height what if I wanted but that was kind of you know about roughly what I wanted and, you know from here I can add um, well let me back up just a little bit Th this it's gonna be a dedicated um, fully rigid it's gonna be a non suspension ever designed frame so I didn't have to do the whole suspension correct extra four inches of hand you know five fingered hand gap through there so Basically, the down tube is going to be, you know, pretty close to the tire. I kind of measured the as far as the rear end too, even though this is 422 here. I have, clean, you know, I measured where the tire is going to come, and it's going to it's going to come within about five or six millimeters of the uh, C tube there. Um, but yeah, so the 52 centimeter C tube, and then I did a 72 degree head tube and C tube angle there, and then. You know, from there, it's just kind of connect the dots, you know, once you have your, you know, basically your stack, and then, you know, you can go back your, you know, whatever 
C tube angle you want and you know your head tube you're gonna start there and then just adjust your head tube angle and then you you know I had established my fork length there so you know at that point it's gonna establish the overall wheelbase um, so yeah this gives me from here I can actually measure the angles right off of this picture and then just transfer that right over to my uh, my um, tube notcher you know links and everything else so um, yeah, this is going to be our, my first step. I need to get a few more. Um, I need to get a uh, 60 millimeter hole saw for the bottom, you know, to notch the tubes uh, for for this portion. And then I tore up my um, my uh, inch and or my yeah, I guess it's inch and an eighth notcher for the C tube. And then I'm going to have to get an inch and a quarter uh, notcher there for the uh, for the fork legs, I think what I'm going to do on the fork also is I'm going to actually, you know, since these are inch and a quarter, the steer tube bottoms inch and an eighth. I'm going to take a section of this tubing and slip it up on the bottom, and you know, weld. I've seen you know a lot of the BMX forks and stuff. That's kind of how they do them. You know, butt it right up to the, you know, figure out where the crown race is going to be welded on, and then just weld an extension that's going to. Um, allow me to weld the inch and a quarter fork legs directly to that so uh, I think that should come out pretty clean but um, yeah that's where I'm at on the project as of right now and um, yeah well uh, hopefully on part three I may may film some of the uh, actual fork fork leg bending see if I can get some shots or something of that and yeah otherwise yeah, so on the, another little thing on the head tube, I, I'm going to try to replicate this uh, gusset here on the, on the old original Webco. You, know, you got, looks like here, here, and then it's welded up through there, so, um, you know, hole in the center. So I'm going to try to replicate that, and then, you know, down here on the bottom bracket, it's got this little boxed in you know thing with the hole which i may try to um you know it's going to be a pretty pretty there's pretty short room there but i may try to you know fold a piece around and you know put a hole there just for i don't know kind of whatever and then where this is square shaped here i may do a similar thing up on the seat stay there so but all those things are going to be at the very you know after i get the frame basically built but um, yeah, that's, uh, I think that'll, you know, should look kind of cool. Um, you know, one, one other little thing I didn't really mention, but, um, you know, just kind of the overall, you know, couple things, the overall design, you know, with the taller, you know, 52 centimeter seat tube there, you know, I know most, um, you know, mountain bike type things or BMX bike, the newer style, they're really low. You know, they have a really low profile, but I kind of wanted to have the overall look of this to, you know, kind of look like an old, you know, the old kind of double diamond style BMX frames where everything got real long and low looking, you know, so it kind of looks like a, um, you know, like a 70s, late 70s, mid 70s, uh, 26 inch cruiser type thing, something kind of that look. You know, I wanted to do the whole loop tail thing. You know, it's, it's kind of cool the way this is. You know, it's basically all, you know, one piece. You know, and now I kind of wanted to do something like that initially, but you know, I just don't have the. You know, right at this point, it's just kind of a compromise of getting the closest look I could to it, and so it's just going to be a basic, you know, straight tube to the drop out there. So kind of a compromise between what I have the ability to do right now versus uh, um, you know what my uh, you know budget is and everything else so um, yeah yeah that's all I've got for this part two and stay tuned for part three and we'll see you guys next time Yeah, I did this on probably the grungiest paper that it just laying around, so that's what I used.